Nice! <laughs> Welcome back to season two of Invisible Labs! Hydrogen! I need that in my classroom. You can see I've surrounded myself with gases. And the reason is there's some really, really amazing chemistry that goes along with gases. And I could stand up here all day and tell you about them, or I could just get out a balloon and a lighter and see if I can really catch your attention by seeing if the gases blow up. So I'm gonna start filling up balloons with these gases, and then we're gonna find out what happens when they come in contact with a little bit of heat. First up, this is helium. We're all familiar with helium, right? Helium at the kids' birthday parties. And it says right here, look at this. I was reading the label. Do not inhale helium. I wonder why they tell you not to inhale helium. It seems kind of like the first thing that every kid does once they get a balloon, right? Helium! Now, I'm not gonna tell you, but if you were at a birthday party and you had a helium balloon, and you got it too close to the candle, what's gonna happen? I don't know. Now we all know that helium is lighter than air. What happens if the helium balloon gets too close to the candles? Make your prediction. Helium in three, two, one. Just like you'd expect, right? Just nothing, no big kaboom. Well, that's why we use helium at the birthday parties because it doesn't blow up. Now, there are other gases that are lighter than the air around it, just like helium, but they don't necessarily act the same way when a little fire gets involved. And that's what we have over here. This is hydrogen. So hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. It's the most abundant gas and abundant element in the universe. You know what they say, if a little's good, more is better. Maybe a little too much there. Maybe you've heard of the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg was filled up with hydrogen. In three, two, one. That was good. You see it? Hydrogen. Now, that's why we don't use hydrogen at the little kids' birthday parties. Now, what's happening is we just made water there, okay? The hydrogen went, it blew up, but hydrogen itself can't combust it has to have oxygen to combust. So you could probably see it stretching out from the middle there. What it's looking for is oxygen. And when hydrogen combines with oxygen, it makes H2O. H2O is water. Now, I wonder what would happen if we gave a little bit of oxygen to the inside of the balloon so the hydrogen didn't have to spread out and grab oxygen from around here. Well, I think, theoretically, then it wouldn't have to flare out as far and the reaction might happen a little faster. And quite frankly, this one scares me. So now we got the real makings of water. We've got hydrogen and we've got oxygen. Remember, water is H2O, so we're just gonna make some water. But I need roughly twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. Bad idea? Let's find out. Oh, I'm breathing so hard, I, I <laughs> blew out the candle. All clear, in three, two, one. <laughs> That's fantastic. Holy cow, I think the only way we're really gonna be able to see that is in slow motion. I can feel it move my hair over. Look, I made my hair stand up on end a little bit. A little warm over here on this side of the face. But all we did, just like before, we just made water. But this time, we had the oxygen down inside of there. And I'm telling you what, that's how we do it on the Invisible Labs, right? How many of us have seen a hot air balloon in thermal? Well, I, I don't know, I haven't. But I had this grand idea. We've done so much stuff with little balloons and so much stuff with different gases and so much stuff with fire. I thought, let's put it all together with a big hot air balloon and check it out in thermal. So now we find ourselves outside of the invisible lab early, early in the morning before the sun comes up out here with a balloon crew to see what a hot air balloon looks like in thermal. Fire. This 
This is when the balloon was coming down. That's all that hot air sneaking out of the top. Simple science, right guys? Now that first balloon we looked at was a normal shaped balloon, but it's a really small one. It's called a cloud hopper for one person to just hop in a seat and go floating around. The next one we're gonna look at is a really special design. It's like a tetrahedron, like a, like a pyramid, but upside down. And there's very few of these in the world, which is why we really, really wanna get this in thermal because the physics behind it isn't even fully understood why there's so much more lift with this shape that we're gonna see than there is with a traditional balloon. So we're not just doing this for pretty pictures, people. What a perfect example of how heat and temperature can change the density and change the volume of a gas. This is perfect. And we could see it in thermal as the heat was going up inside of there. We could see it expanding and the balloon getting bigger and bigger and ultimately standing upright. This is just perfect. And now you just pull the top, let the hot air out and this thing's gonna sink back down and it's little fit into a bag about this big. So here we go. Beautiful morning to be out here playing with balloons and learning a little bit about science. Nice! Well, thanks for watching. To see the latest from FLIR, click on subscribe or come on over to the channel and check out all the amazing things that Infrared is showing us.